completed image, which is part of an image processing. And they go to take a passport size photo. You know that the, the camera person, he takes a photo, puts it into the computer, and starts changing the background. There's some touch up here and there. Okay, it makes us look very looking very good and so on. So he's also doing image processing. And all of us, they gave voter ID or an Aadhaar card or a driving license. Since wherever we went, wherever we gave a picture of us, or a biometric we gave, everywhere we have been doing some kind of image processing. So image processing has become part and parcel of our life. Every moment, everything has image attached to it. And therefore, this becomes a very, very important topic because this becomes very contemporary now. Because maybe uh, 20 years back, no one thought of image as an important uh, identity or two. But now image is become a very important identity for us. So image processing is coming along with it. Okay. So then, what are the different applications? So I have already told you many applications, but what are the specific applications of image processing? So one of the applications is biometric security. So nowadays, you know that a phone is enabled. Okay, we put a, a lock for the phone, which is basically your thumbprint or your uh, print of the phone in, uh, of your finger is given as a lock for the phone. So it is once again a security feature where the image of your thumb is being so fingerprint. Similarly, a signature, similarly, an iris, all these are a type of security measures where images are captured. So capture your attendance, which is biometric attendance system, or an image like the face recognition system. So wherever you require or wherever you require a security aspect, a biometric security aspect, we are going for an image requirement and therefore an image process. Second one is another important application that we come from JPOs. I'm just mentioning a few applications. Many more will come. So that at the end of this lecture, what I would love always like as an output of this lecture is that whenever you now watch or see taking a photo, you should remember my lecture. You should remember that okay, I'm doing image processing. So I am doing this particular uh, operation on the image. So that type of an uh, idea or that should immediately strike in your mind. So image search engines, this also we have, isn't it? So whenever we do Google, so we can have image search. So you just have to click image search, and when you say images of a particular car, if you say, you get all those car images. Or if you say red car, then red car images. So like that, image-based search engines instead of text-based search engines. These are, one, once again, a type of an image processing application. We call them as content-based retrieval systems. Then, diagnosis, which is going to be medical. So all of us at any point in time would have had a fracture or some way some image of a relative or someone has been taken. Either it is an X-ray image or a CT image or maybe an MRI image. So all these images a doctor has a look at it. But even machines can do that. So when you take an ultrasound, it is on the screen. The medical field for medical diagnosis. Speaking to you, and you are listening to me. You are seeing my face, you are seeing my screen. So, communication is basically your data transmitting. So, video is being communicated now, which is basically number of pictures put in a of a screen. So, transmission of pictures, transmission of period is part of an image process. So, when we transmit, there will be problems in your Okay. Maybe due to network problem or due to some kind of other errors that can happen, you may not see the image. Problem. Then we might need to do some kind of recovery of that particular image. So, for enhancement, for restoration, for removal of noise, the image, for all these purposes, similarly for compression of images. So, all of you will know that we normally save the image either as a JPEG file or a GIF file or a TIFF file and so on. So, similarly, we do. So, we look at the amount of Bytes which are required for saving the image. And we choose the compression technique accordingly. So that is once again a type of an image processing application. Okay, so then before I go on to the printers for image processing, I need to touch upon a little bit of fundamentals on the images as So what is a digital image? How do we say? Because all of us look at anything you see is going to be an image. Yeah. I put your eye capturing photographs now and then. Our eye is the camera that we are using and we are capturing photographs now and every minute we are doing that. So the, the image is part of our life, the vision system is part of our life. 
okay part of the human nature so how do we mathematically or how do we look at it in the form of an uh, as a system how do we look at it so digital image is basically can be defined as a two dimensional light intensity function so all of us know one dimensional system for example voice my audio is actually a one dimensional system but an image or a picture is going to be two dimensions and we represent it as a function of x and y so this x and this y are basically we call them as coordinates like a person in a room if i i sit in a room or all of you are sitting in some place in your room we have a coordinate it's like we say latitude and longitude we can call our location in the form of a coordinate so similarly a picture can have coordinates in space and we call them as spatial coordinates we represent it as x or y and what is the f f is basically the intensity or the brightness or in technical terms we may consider the problem as ray level so how much of light is coming out of that particular point or what is the brightness of the particular point that is the function f so image is basically a two dimension so a single dimension function is represented as f of x okay or f of y okay but or f of t but here we are calling it as f of x comma y where x and y are spatial coordinates and f is the brightness or intensity or the ray level of the image so diagrammatically when you look at it so this is how it's going to look like so we are looking at an image say this would be a picture and these are all the points in that particular picture which i have blown up for you to see that is an x direction and y direction which we call as coordinate and there is a light which is coming out at every point in the image so which we call as of x comma y which is the intensity of brightness or the ray point so this is image can be this now we know a picture we see picture every time we see every uh, anything so but now when you are giving it to a computer for processing a computer requires everything to be in the form of numbers only then it can do any kind of processing or any work or be done on the image so this is image we can call as an image which is discretized in both the spatial coordinates and in the brightness so when we do any conversion okay any analog to digital conversion we need to make what are called as discrete values so we convert the continuous values to discrete values so this discretization okay will be done both in the brightness as well as in the spatial coordinate so when i say discretization for example i take say a number like 1.123 then discretize it as 1 or something like 2.5 i can discretize it as 3 or maybe x2 so this is what we are called as rounding off or truncation all these are types of ways in which we can convert a continuous value or we need to do a discrete value and here in image we need to do the discretization both in x comma y as well as in the prime step so we are going to represent the image as an array Has to do the image processing. Uh, mobile phone has to do a image processing. So everywhere a processor has to do this particular task. So when a for a processor, we need to give it in the form in which it can do the process. So we have to give here the form of. So image will be represented in the form of a number, a group of number, which we call as an array. Okay, having a row, having a rows and columns, and each of the number will be represented with finite number of rows. So, for example, let's say the image intensity is 255, then I have to represent it with an 8-bit number. So, like that, it should be given the form of a binary value to the computer for it to understand and for it to any uh, to any kind of manipulation or processing of the image. So, what is a model? What is the image model? So, like anything, uh, any machine processing or any uh, anything that we build. We always try to mimic nature. So always we are looking back to nature, to ourselves, okay, and what is around us, so that we are able to build a model. So for image also, the eye is the model that we take of the world. So we just look at uh, our imagination, human imagination. The human imagination has a limitation. Okay, the limitation is basically what we know is basically. 
So we can never uh, auditorium students who have watched a lot of movies and so on. In a movie coming, okay, uh, audience will have hands or will have legs or it look like a lizard or, or it look like a dinosaur. That's all. Nothing more than anyone can imagine. So always there's a limit to the imagination. We are looking at nature, whatever we see or whatever we have in front of us. That is what we are trying to model machines also. So in the case of an image, the eye is a model. So vision is a model that is going to be taken. So we are going to give the eye model or we are going to give computer a uh, vision. Or computer vision model. So how do we characterize epoxy comma white? Epoxy comma white can be characterized by two components. Okay, it can be characterized by two components. One component is called as illumination. The other component is called as reflection. So what is meant by illumination? Illumination is basically the light. Okay, the intensity of light which is falling on the object. The second one is reflectance. Reflectance is how much of light is reflected by the object. So all of you have must have uh, had this idea of that uh, in physics, when an object is said to be red, if I say an object is red, why does it look like red? Or uh, what is the reason that the object I see is red? That's because all the light fell on that image, on that object, but that object reflected only the red color. All other colors were absorbed by the object. So whatever is reflected only I am able to see and that is the color of the object. So here also when we design the model for an image, we are looking at these two parts of the one is illumination part, the second one is going to be the reflectance part. So what is this illumination? Whether both are required or whether one is sufficient. Suppose I am leaving you in a room and I am turning off all the lights. That means I am keeping you in a dark room. Okay. Can you see anything? What is the encounter many times? Suddenly, that's a power of the Speaking in all visible. Now is good, sir. Miss? Okay, sir. Good morning. Is it okay, sir? Nali Lundi. Sura, sir? Nali Lundi. 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 Okay. Okay, no. No, increase its size. Okay. I mean, no. Uh, right now? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so let's proceed then. So I turn on the light, we are able to see something. So without illumination, vision is not possible. So that's one aspect. Second aspect, reflectance. Do I require reflectance part or not? Suppose I say reflectance is zero. Okay, that means object is not reflecting any light. 
So what happens? The object will look black. Okay, because it is absorbing all the light. And on the other hand, if I make the object with having a reflectance of one, then I'll be seeing that object as a white object. So these are the two extremities we can talk about. So one is the requirement of illumination. Second is the requirement of reflectance. So the image model above it's comma white can be taken as a product of that I have turned off all the lights. And if I say infinity, that means the total light is zero. And second one, reflectance. That means reflectance is zero, implying that object is black. And reflectance one, object is white. So the image is now a product of illumination and reflectance. It is different on both of these parameters. Yes. And even if one parameter is zero, or then we will not be able to see any object. So this is the model which is being used for our, uh, our image processing. So when you look at this particular model, what happens is we can say the terminology as gray level. So we, we use the terminology as gray level, where gray level or gray scale varies from L minimum to L maximum. So minimum is the minimum value of the gray level, which is zero. Well, maximum is normally taken as 255 because you're going to use 8 bits for the uh, image representation and therefore we go up to 255. So 0 corresponds to black while L will corresponds to black. So this is for a monochrome writer. So as I told you, since your uh, system has to understand the image, we have to give it in the form of an array of numbers. So any image can be represented in the form of a matrix of numbers, where each element will be divided in the intensity or is called as a pixel values. So each point is called as a pixel of an image. And what is the expansion of the pixel? The pixel is corresponding to the element matrix on the picture element pixels. And when we uh, look at images, we say so many bits of the image are there. Or so Bytes are there. It is basically corresponding to the number of rows into number of columns, the number of bits which are used for saving the particular image or encoding the image. So that's about what is a pixel and what is meant by resolution. Resolution is how much well or how well you can see your image. Okay, you know, red, green, and blue. And the combination of these three colors is going to be your second colors. So the points that we need to remember is once again, we are looking at intensity of brightness, we are looking at radiance, the amount of light which is coming from the source, and luminance, how much we are perceiving the particular image. So these are the colors and some terminologies you would have always encountered whenever you did some kind of photoshopping on the images, you would have changed the saturation, hue. So one, two corresponds to the dominant color. Whether you want to make the image more reddish or more bluish or more greenish and so on, that is called as a hue. Why? When you talk about saturation, it is how much of whiteness you have added to the particular. So to the red, if you add the white, they are called as saturation. So hue and saturation together are called as a chromaticity of the image. So two things now for color images that you need to remember. One is a brightness, another one is going to be the chromaticity where corresponding to the hue and saturation. So black and white images are very simple to understand. Okay, you just talk about black means zero and white is corresponding to 55. And all values between zero and 255 are corresponding to what about this is gray. But when you go for color, complexity increases because we are having 
three colors prominent or primary colors red green and blue and based on these combinations like cyan magenta yellow all these combinations so we have different color models either the rgb color model or the cyan magenta yellow color model or we have the hue saturation and intensity color models all these modelings are required because we are going to work on these numbers of even when we so what are the steps of the image processing system so when you look at the image processing system there are the processes are one is going to be the image acquisition okay then we have the display then we have a processor and then we have the storage so these these are the parts of an image processing system so we need to acquire the image we need to store the image we need to process the image and we need to display the image so what are the steps in the image processing first we need to identify the problem so what is my idea for what purpose i need to do image processing so what is the problem identification whether it is just going to be to photoshop my image and make me look good or whether it is going to be in medical diagnosis or produce which is going to be a higher uh, level of a problem or whether i am going to do a signature identification in a bank to check uh, check there is still higher problem or whether it is biometric i have to check whether the person who is using my system is a correct person or not so these are different levels of problem that we do a low level a simple problem or a very higher level problem. so problems have to be formulated and accordingly the image is have to be acquired so after acquiring the image we need to process the image which we call as pre processing stage after pre processing we need to segment find out which bit then we need to do the processing which we call as segmentation identifying the region of interest from segmentation we need to represent the image in the form of numbers or in the form of variables and describe it okay for recognition and identification say a bank a uh, manager wants to check whether the check with the signature that you have put in the check is a correct person signature or not then all these other parts of the problem that we will take a scan of your check we will do some kind of processing where we might uh, trim the edges then we might take only that is present is present that we will take out the segmentation then we will check whether the signature that is available in the database and your signature are same which is recognition and interpretation and finally we will give our final result saying that yes the signature is correct i will give you my of one lakh show you Now, or you might say it is a match with the database which I have, and so on. It cannot be processed. So these are the different steps in the image processing system. So when you look at pre-processing of images, they have to be done after image acquisition, where a low contrast image has to be moved to high contrast image, or after image resolution, where you have to uh, remove the noise which is present in the. So all these things. Involves two important operations of enhancement and resolution. So when we want to do this enhancement of the image, where we want to improve the quality, or we want to restore the image, where we want to remove the noise or any kind of blur which is present in the image, then the important technology which comes to us, or the technique which comes to us, is the digital filtering. So now I am entering into the topic which I have mentioned: digital filtering, use of digital filtering in image processing. So I give you a prim preliminary idea of, of what is an image and how an image is going to be represented in the form of a matrix or array of numbers. And from this image, what are the applications that can be done? And now we are entering into the filtering operation of the image, where we want to remove the filter, noise, and any uh, sources of disturbances which are present. So digital filtering is required. For removing the thermal noise, for removing the power supply noise, for removing the atmospheric noise, for removing interferences, and so on. So frequency is a parameter which is going to be used for digital filtering. So when you go for digital filtering, there are the model is there for a digital filter. What does it do? When you give an input signal, in our case, we'll give an image as a input. This is a model, a generic model. Input signal is x of n, y of n is out. But I have sent it through a filter where I am trying to transform the input to the so y of n is a transformation 
combination of types of them. So all of us know that we can have four different types of filters, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a band pass filter, a bunch of filters. And all these filters that you did in one dimensional signal processing can be utilized for the two dimensional signal processing, which is a image also. So how does filter uh, play an important role for a picture, for an image? That is what we are going to see now. So the most important requirement of the digital image processing is the removal of the noise. Now, now you might say, I am getting a good quality image. Where is the noise? Okay, where is the blur kind of things that you are saying? This can happen not maybe in our uh, present day with a good, very good phone switch. But I am talking about image captured from satellites. Suppose we are looking at a satellite image. All of you know it's a lazy kind of image. Why the image is lazy? Because the satellite which is up on the sky, around 36,000 kilometers far away, is capturing the image. And when it captured the image and it sent to Earth to the Earth stations which are present, there it traveled through the different layers of the atmosphere, encountered so many areas of the troposphere, all these spheres, encountered the rain attenuation, all these things were encountered before it reached up. So there we are looking at noise. So noise during transmission. Similarly, we are looking at images taken under dim light conditions. They are also not be able to see properly. Images taken of the human body, the ultrasound images, or the X-ray images. So all of you at some point would have taken an ultrasound. It is a very noisy kind of image. So image is degraded during the image acquisition process itself. Like an ultrasound image or a brain images which are taken. So image acquisition. Images which have been degraded during the transmission.
body of the pin. So once again, you take your image window and you're going to take maximum value. Then we call it as transform. You take nine pixels and arrange them. You take the minimum value. If it is all the nine pixels by the minimum value, then such a pixel is going to be called as a min. Start time. A medium filter. Take nine pixels, arrange them in ascending order or descending order. Choose the centermost value, which we call as medium value. Value. It is all the pixels with the median value. Then we call it as a median. Of all these three filters, max, then median filter is the best kind of filter. It is very, very good compared to even the spatial. So we are just going to find out the median value of all the pixels which are present in your window. Suppose I have chosen a group of nine, nine pixels. Within that nine pixels, which is the median value, we find out. We place all the pixels with the median value, then we call that as a median kind of a filtering. So this median filtering is very helpful when you want to remove isolated lines, pixels, okay, but still it preserves the resolution of the image because that is very, very important. When you look at the spatial filter or the average kind of filter, it is removing, reducing the resolution of the total image. Maybe it is removing noise, but still it is removing the resolution. Median filters is able to preserve the resolution, but also able to remove the noise. So look at this example here. I have added a noise which we call the degree. So salt and pepper noise means it be a black and white spots which are forming on the image. And if I use a median filter on this salt and pepper noise uh, degraded image, then I get a very good light of a noise. So median filter is better when compared to the average filter. Let us look at the screen where you have a comparison between an averaging filter and a median filter. So the here is an averaging filter on one side and this side you have a median filter. So the averaging filter is basically finding the average value of the pixels. So if I take a group of pixels, I find out the average value, I replace that group by the average value. But median, you are finding, take a group of pixels, finding the median value of the pixel and replace it. So that is the advantage of median. And the median filter is much better compared to the averaging filter. Okay, so next one we have is what is called as sharpening filters. So when I look at sharpening filters, what are sharpening filters? So the, uh, the earlier one we saw that smoothening filters. They are smoothing out the noise. Movement. Now we are looking at filters which are sharpening filters. Many a time, we normally want to see our image better. So what we do is we try to use a feature called a sharpen as a feature. The sharpening will basically increase the Need to go to some kind of a The low pass or the smoothing filters are based on averaging and soft. Averaging.
operator, which is once again a sharpening operator. So several applications might require you to find out the edges of the image. Okay. So there, for example, in remote sensing applications, where you might need to find out which locations are important for your uh, maybe you find out where some water body is lying or maybe a motor range is lying. So that also is a identification. You might require edge map. So then you might require this kind of uh, operators which are sharpening the image. Now as we move on, we also have not only the operators or uh, filters which are used for smoothening or sharpening. We can Chennai. So, Pondi to Chennai frequency of times from Pondi. So, that is number of buses per hour. That we call it as frequency in the, in the context of a lake topic like buses. If I go for a context of a one dimensional signal processing, audio, I'm communicating with you with respect to speech, my audio. All of you know audio frequency range is from, say, 300 hertz. You can take up to say 20 kilohertz also you can take, but if I take for communication part for band, 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz is the bandwidth of my audio signal. So there also hertz is coming and we are talking about frequency, right? In terms of digital, you can know, call, call in terms of number of bits per second. That would be the frequency. But in context of images, how would we talk about the context of frequency? So that might be a question always coming to your mind because I'm going on talking about frequency as an aspect. In case of images, about how much 
is repeating. Say, for example, you have an image completely non based Such an image, if I'm going to change, take the transition between white to black, white to black, then we will call that as a thickness. So changes in the level that Okay, then we will call it as frequency. When you look at high frequency image, an abrupt change. Suddenly from black to white, a change of images. How the black to white or white to black is taking place? How the pixels are arranged in the image? From the first pixel to the second pixel, whether the change is abrupt, then we call it as high frequency. If it is very gradual, then we call it as low frequency. If it is same, then we will say it is constant frequency. That means addition two pixels are white and white. And we said the same thing. So this is how the context of frequency is brought about in terms of image processing. So with this context only, we are designing filters which are called the smoothing filters, which average out, or sharpening filters which are increasing the uh, level of uh, edges or trying to find the transitions and so on. So this is so if we are going to have a high frequency context as well as a low frequency context, we can also have a band pass filtering as well as a band stop filtering context. So that is one aspect. Another aspect which I would like to touch upon today is what are called as image restoration. Filtering is okay. What is restoration? Restoration means that you can have situations like blur can be. What do you mean by blur? Suppose that all of us traveling through in a car or in a bus, suddenly we want to capture a picture. The camera. Then the bus is in motion. The object will be at station, but the bus is motion during the transition when I capture it. You know that can be a small shady area coming, which we call as a blur. Or I am stationary, I want to capture a moving on, like a bird flying, or maybe a plane is going in the sky. I want to capture. Then once again, I will get a blur. So object can be in motion, camera can be in motion, camera can be defocused. All these aspects are called as blurs. So we can have different ways in which we can restore back the image. And one important technique which has been employed to do a very good restoration is what is called the cleaner filter form of a So it will remove the noise as well as it can remove the blur. And this is the type of transfer function that you will get for this cleaner filter. So it will act like a bandpass filter for both the noise as well as for the blur. Let me show you an example. So this is my original image. It's a very short nice image I've taken. I have made it as a very blurry image and then I restore it back, I can get back this image. So everything is possible. So don't think if I capture an image like this, nothing can be done. It can be brought back to this level also. So techniques are available, methods are available in image processing where we can retrieve back images which have been corrupted with noise as well as with blur. So this is another example. Purging image, a blurred image and getting back up the restored image. And you can also have a situation where it can be blurred, it can also be so this is the image where cameraman is not at all visible. But there are methods available in image processing which can retrieve back such kind of image also. So all these algorithms have been well developed by several scientists. And so the field of image processing is wide open. So many aspects, so many algorithms can be developed so that we are able to get back or retrieve back the original image. So in the context of filters, we have one more kind of a filter called as an adaptive filter. So some Thing, we know that we need to adapt ourselves to the situation. Many of our parents have told us that, come on, you have to adapt to this. Okay, you're going to the hospital, you have to adapt. You're coming back to this, also. going back. Here also, filters also can be made adapt because different left, different regions, different noises can be left in the same picture. Okay, so then can I apply only a smoothing filter on one side? Some places you might require a different situation. Some places you might require a restoration. So, filtering, smoothing, sharpening, restoration, everything can be possible to be done together. Then we call that type of filters as adaptive type of filters. Because different regions of the image can have different characteristics and, and filter behavior is made to change based on these. So we can have 
filters or you can have adaptive linear filters. All things are adaptors. Applying the filters, different sorts of filters in different areas and get back the final So you can preserve the edges. You can preserve the edges of it. You can also the, the approximation regions or the equal intensity regions can be smoothed and made better. It is possible, but adaptive and better. So, I want to take some slides. So, I want to say which are formed in each process. They capture the and whenever you're starting to uh, do some kind of working on that image to make you look better or you add some uh, splash of color, add some words in it and so on, you're basically doing an image process. So think back, look back into whatever processes you have done, they are all parts of image processing. So the field of image processing has experienced a tremendous change. Okay, from monochrome to color and now video image processing, so much changes have taken place. More so during this last year, a lot of changes have taken place in the way we are handling the uh, images. So, this usefulness of this te technology is apparent. Many disciplines have taken up this technology, starting from medicine to remote sensing and very uh, different applications, is now dealing with images. So, the importance of image processing is very very uh, contemporary or very important at this point right and not only the algorithms these algorithms have to work on hardware so hardware development also has taken place in this so the processors which are now coming in our mobile phones and in the computers are able to cater to the needs of this requirement that the young generation is having for image processing so uh, therefore as we see students okay you are a very important uh, topic that you have to come to know is about this image. So I tried to give you a, a bird's eye view. So the image processing is a big portion. I just have given you a bird's eye view of what is an image and what is the, the use of what filter which are used for image, specifically for noise reduction, for image enhancement, for image exploration as applications. So I thank you one and all for your patient hearing for this one hour of lecture. I thank uh, Madam Neelam Srivastava for uh, introducing me to the students and uh, uh, calling all the students to listen to my lecture. I thank all the faculty who are Building this picture. And I want you students, if you have any clarification, you can pass it now. Or I am Amit Kumar, I am from the department, IIT Sanford, and I also thanks to the coordinator of PEC as well as IIT Lucknow. And a very nice lecture I have heard, and I also want to some uh, software apps available for these software or apps if you have any link please mail us to our students or our department to dr neelam shivastav and sure. we can use these apps and softwares to understand the image processing and we have seen there are so, so many examples how to improve the Or 
of this lecture and i will also thank once again thank you very much thank you so much